Many reactions involve the transfer of electrons. These are called redox reactions. Every redox reaction involves a reduction and an oxidation reaction. Oxidation involves the loss of electrons. In an oxidation, a reducing agent is oxidized and its oxidation number increases. Here we have zinc metal going to zinc 2 plus and losing two electrons. So the zinc is going from an oxidation number of 0 to an oxidation number of plus 2. It's increased. Reduction reactions involve the gain of electrons. In these, an oxidizing agent is reduced and its oxidation number decreases. Here we have silver ions gaining an electron to go to silver metal and the silver is going from plus 1 to 0. Its oxidation number is decreasing. Any redox reaction can always be thought of as a combination of two half reactions or half cell reactions. One of these will always be an oxidation and one will be a reduction. And we need to make sure that the electrons aren't left over, so we need to balance them on the, for the two reactions. And then we can cancel them out. So for example, here we have a oxidation of zinc to zinc 2 plus and 2 electrons and a reduction of silver ions to silver metal involving one electron. So if I added these two together, I still end up with a net number of electrons. So I multiply the second one by 2, so that when I add them together, the electrons on the left-hand side and the electrons on the right-hand side cancel, and I'm left with a reaction between zinc metal and silver ions, giving zinc ions and silver, as I required. Now I can do this in one beaker, or I can actually separate them. And if I separate them into two beakers, I've ended up with a galvanic cell, or, or a battery and the electrons that are involved in the reaction can be harnessed to give me energy for my devices. Now we can always write out the full chemical equation but when we're look, looking at batteries and cells it's often more convenient to use shorthand. Here on the left hand side I've got my oxidation reaction of zinc going to zinc 2 plus and on the right hand side I've got the reduction reaction we've got the silver ions being reduced to silver. On the left hand side it's literally a electrode made of zinc metal in contact with a solution of zinc ions. There's a phase boundary between them, between the solid metal and the solution. And on the right hand side I've got a piece of silver in a solution of silver ions. And again the phase boundary is the contact between the metal and the solution. They're in separate beakers or compartments and they're connected by a wire to collect the electrons and a salt bridge to make up the circuit. On the left hand side we have the oxidation half cell the anode, and on the right hand side we have the reduction half cell, the cathode, and the electrons flow from the anode to the cathode. So oxidation always occurs at the anode, oxidation anode, and reduction always occurs at the cathode, reduction cathode. When I connect up these cells, those electrons will transfer and I can measure a voltage. That voltage is called the cell potential, symbol E. If the concentrations are all one molar, then there's standard concentrations, and, and the potential I will measure is the standard cell potential, E0. So for example, for this cell, when I connect it up, I would measure an E0, a cell potential of plus 1.56 volts. The cell potential is also sometimes called the EMF, electromotive force, or just the voltage. Now the standard cell potential is the sum of the standard cell potentials for each of those half cells so here I've got an oxidation half cell involving the zinc, which has an oxidation half cell potential of plus 0.76 volts. And I have a reduction half cell involving the silver and silver ions, and that has a reduction half cell potential of plus 0.8. And I add those two things together, and I give me my experimental measurement of 1.56 volts. Half cell potentials are collected together in tables, but they're always tabulated as reduction reactions gain of electrons. So at the top we have gold ions being reduced to gold metal and at the bottom we have water being reduced to hydrogen and hydroxide. The ones at the top are weak reducing agents and the ones at the bottom are strong reducing agents. Or the ones at the top are strong oxidizing agents and the ones at the bottom are weak oxidizing agents. As I said earlier, redox reactions always involve an oxidation half cell and a reduction half cell. So we can't couple together two reduction half cells. We have to reverse one and turn it into an oxidation. How do we know which one to reverse when we couple two half cells together? Well, we find and we write down the half cell potentials from the table. 
So they're written as reductions. So here we've got the reduction half cell for zinc 2 plus, minus 0.76 volts, and the reduction half cell potential for silver ions, plus 0.8 volts. Which one do we turn around? Well, we reverse the one that's further down the table. It has the less positive or more negative potential. Here it's the zinc. Zinc is minus 0.76 volts. It's further down the table. It's the one that we reverse. When we reverse it, it's now zinc being oxidized to zinc 2 plus and 2 electrons. Its reduction half cell was minus 0.76. Its oxidation potential is plus 0.76. Now we have an oxidation, we can couple it with a reduction. So we're going to couple it with our silver iron going to silver, which is plus 0.8 volts. We can add the two things together to give us a whole cell potential of 1.56. 0.76 plus 0.8 volts added together to be 1.56 volts. So if we're combining two half cells, we write the two half cells down, to write the two half reactions down, we work out which is the oxidation half cell and which is going to be the reduction half cell by looking for the one that's least positive or more negative as a reduction and we reverse it and change its sign. We make sure that the electrons are balanced and then we add up those half reactions to give us the full reaction and we add up the half cell potentials to give us the full cell potential. We can always check that we've done the right thing because if it's a working cell, a spontaneous working battery would always have a positive cell potential. If we've reversed the wrong one, then we're likely to get a negative cell potential and we know we've done the wrong thing. So let's do a couple of examples. What is the cell potential for a galvanic cell with magnesium 2 plus magnesium half cell in one part and zinc 2 plus zinc half cell in the other part? So how do we know which one of these is going to be the oxidation and which ones are going to reduction? Well, we look up them in the table. We look up the reduction half cell potentials. We for zinc 2 plus is minus 0.14, but for magnesium 2 plus it's minus 2.37. So which one do we turn around? We turn around the one which is lower at the table, the one that has the more negative or less positive half cell potential. Well, the magnesium is the stronger reducing agent. It likes to be oxidized. Its reduction potential is minus 2.37. It's the more negative. It's the one we turn around, and it becomes the oxidation reaction. We turn it around, so it's now magnesium metal. goes to magnesium 2 plus, plus 2 electrons. Oxidation. Its reduction was minus 2.37. So its oxidation is plus 0.237. Now we can couple it together with the tin reduction half cell. Tin 2 plus plus 2 electrons goes to tin. Add the two things together. In this case, we didn't have to worry about the electrons because it was 2 in both cases. So they've cancelled. And now we've got the reaction between two tin 2 plus ions and magnesium going to tin metal and magnesium 2 plus. We've added the two half cells, one oxidation and one reduction. We can add the oxidation and the reduction half cells. Minus 0.14 and plus 2.37 gives us a total cell potential of 2.23. Okay, one final example. What's the cell potential when we put together a silver iron silver half cell with a chromium 3 plus chromium half cell? Again, we find and write down the two reduction half cell potentials. For the silver ions, going to silver metal plus 0.8 volts, and for chromium 3 plus, going to chromium metal, minus 0.74 volts. So which one do we turn around? We turn around the one that's lower in the table, the more negative, the less positive. Here is clearly the chromium one. Chromium is minus 0.74, silver arms is plus 0.8. So it's the chromium one that's lower in the table, it's the chromium one that's more negative. We turn it around, it becomes an oxidation reaction, loss of electrons, chromium metal goes to chromium 3 plus, and instead of minus 0.74 for reduction, it's plus 0.74 for oxidation. We can now combine it with our reduction half cell for silver. Silver ions plus an electron goes to silver. But here we've just got to be a little bit careful. The silver ion only requires one electron, whereas the chromium will produce three electrons. So we need to balance the electrons. So we're going to multiply the first one by three. So now we have three silver ions and three electrons involved. Now we can add them together and the electrons will cancel. Three silver ions plus chromium metal goes to three silvers plus chromium three plus. We add the cell potentials, plus 0.8, 
plus 0.74 gives us a total of plus 1.54 volts. Notice we added those two cell potentials. I didn't multiply the first one by three. Cell potentials are per electron and don't depend on stoichiometry. The total cell potential is just the sum of the two half cell potentials, plus 1.54 volts. It's positive, and so we've turned around the correct one.